But we're gonna hop right into this game here on the top left hand side, currently being scouted by his red opponent. In the green Zerg trunks, playing for Nocturnal Gamers, it's Gaiden! Spawning in the bottom right, it's from Psystorm, it's Sugar. My cat just knocked over my torch, that's what that loud clink was. My fault guys, hopefully that didn't bust your speakers or nothing. But anyways, we've got very standard builds, we've got um, a, a fairly quick uh, expansion by the Terran, we've got the, um, you know, Gasless expand, Gasless expand by our Zerg player. Uh, what timing are you expecting a third? Is this going to be like a lower tech game? Well, I think there's nothing to lose uh, by doing a macro opening mm -hmm. in Abyssal Reef. I mean, of course, there are all kinds of builds that you can do here. Mm -hmm. uh, but you compared to that, that I'm, I'm quite interested in the Terran build. It's going for a really quick second refinery, which means there's going to be more options for um, mech. And it definitely speaks because uh, we don't really see a lot of Terrans going for second refinery as fast. Oh, um, he gets that third yes. base, man. He, he kills off the third base drone, dude. That was pretty awesome. Actually, I think oh, if wow. he had just targeted that drone with the Reaper, that he could have right. killed the Reaper with the drone, but he does kill off that third base and slowing down that third base quite a bit, man. How's that impact this game? That Reaper is uh, quite annoying. It's always something you want to watch out for, and mm -hmm. Koreans uh, in pro tournaments always park their drone like way at a, ahead of the time so that it can hide, and when the Reaper goes in, that's when you can confirm the location of the Reaper, and that's mm -hmm. when you start the third phase. This Reaper uh, totally worth his weight in gold. Man, he has oh, micro the hell out of it. Uh, unfortunately, the timing for the Zerg base has been delayed by like 30-40 seconds, but with mm -hmm. the metabolic boost, now done, it should be definitely safe, and Reaper should come home right now. Yeah, man. So we've got the third base being taken on the opposite side of the map. This will make it uh, defending like Hellion run by is a lot more interesting. Now this Reaper still uh, wreaking havoc in the Zerg base. Link's trying to knock it back, but he does get away on that cliff's edge there. Mm. Now I want to talk briefly about the third mm -hmm. base. It mm -hmm. used to be that in Korea, in the Korean pro scene, Mm -hmm. It was absolutely essential that you get the third at the um, at the at the left side of the screen. Okay. I mean left side of the map. But mm -hmm. they were absolutely surprised when foreigners came to Korea and started mm -hmm. making the third base there. And then we learned that if you make it there, then mm -hmm. you can get your creep spread much faster out yes. towards the middle of the map. Definitely. So it looks like Gideon uh, trying uh, trying something a little different here. We'll see if it works out for him because Sugar has totally been dominating this game without well with one reaper i'm curious to see what he can do with this raven that's coming out right uh this is a pretty interesting build uh, it's good it went for a fast gas for the raven mm -hmm. um no there's stem being done on the way but it seems interesting well, hold because that thought, sure there's a little bit of a battle about to be starting here hellion's trying oh, to definitely. run shutting down this third base and the hellion's going to be a, doing a good job zoning the wings away queen's going to be Coming a little bit off the creep to try to knock back the uh, Hellion forces, but it is very mobile. And without Reaper there, he can split the Queens and keep them away from the Hellions for quite some time. Looks like he's going to try and do that again, but the Hellions are going to be forced off that third base. Man. Some creeps right going down. That's exactly the right response. But Raven is going to pop here into the main, and this could do a lot of damage. Look. Yeah, the turret does so much damage, you have to pull it off immediately, and the queens are holding their defense wall, but you really have to pull that drone. Already five drones killed, that's really not what you want at this stage of the game, especially considering that uh, Jiren actually has 37 drones, so that's not so much. Yeah, it, it, worker count is completely even. Now these lings are knocking down the front a little bit here, but SCV is being pulled to repair that, and Marines are going to be able to knock the lings back, or actually getting choosing to go ahead and commit to this attack, but Raven is doing a ton of work. Oh, I'm not sure if that, that is a good choice here. The, the lings are accomplishing nothing, and these lings are precious, because if you know that they're at Hellions the base... Getting into the natural. Oh, huge kills range, off kills on those drones. drones. Hellions murdering a lot of drones. Oh being goodness. pulled off to try to surround the Hellions. Hellion Reaper doing a massive amount still even worker count and losing a lot of army supply but i definitely think that fade favor and sugar yeah that's why it's so difficult to make these early game decisions if you're going to send the lings and do a counter attack 
what you have to make sure is that they're not being stuck in one place and not being able to accomplish anything. Now, if the depot walls were down and the, S uh, the links were able to flood in and take out some SCVs, that might be an okay trade. But as soon as the wall is up and the SCVs are repairing, you have to be aware. Did I kill those Hellions? No, they're going to come in because now they know where the links are. Yes, indeed. Now, if you just look at the production tab, there's so much more stuff in production right now for sugar. This is coming off the back of such good harassment. The Banshee, or Banshees, wow. The Raven's doing so much with the um, the, the turrets. Just so mm. much um, damage to the worker count that Eden is constantly being forced to rebuild that. And he is working towards Aspire now, which may be beneficial, but just so many upgrades, so much production. Or no, what Zerg players usually do to mm -hmm. counteract the Raven is that instead of going for a Hydraling Bane, they actually mm -hmm. go, oh, that's a, um, there's a Widow Mine there, so it's not going to be accomplishing much. And these bio, if they could just clear out the creep, because they're mm -hmm. not ready for a full fight yet, uh, mm -hmm. that would be just great. Yeah, uh, well, it looks like he is going to go ahead and try for that uh, third base, and he may even get it, but there's a small oh, Zerg on If he loses this third, uh, that is just too much, because now Zerg is on two base at mm -hmm. uh, nearly eight minute timing. Uh, this just may be a bit too much, so we'll really have to see how Gideon handles his multitasking with the mot oh, uh, Mutalists that are about to come out. Yeah, I would definitely argue Nocturnal Gamers were the underdog going into this uh, this series, and we're definitely right. seeing why. Some really good bio micro here, uh, killing off the. Oh, here's the, the, the transfuse. The transfuse needs to be there. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, but that's GG and G then taps out. Yeah, he does realize uh, that there's just been too much damage done there, Sluggy. What do you think was really the pivotal moment? Was it was it that initial Reaper? Or was it the uh, Raven follow up? Uh, usually it is uh, quite a loss if you don't make your third in time, but that wasn't so much just the problem. I would like to point out two problems, which would be the initial turret doing five drone kills. And because he, was, uh, he sustained that damage, he felt like he needed to make something back in the game. So that's why he mm -hmm. sent the links to do a run by it. But unfortunately, uh, Sugar's defense was top notch and it actually proved to be his downfall. Yeah, dude, this is already proving to be a very interesting best of seven series. We will see what these players have coming up, but I want to take a moment to thank one of our audience members. Lettuce Bish XX uh, is now hosting us. Thank you so much. And guys, if you want to help support the uh, the event, please, uh, you know, host it, share it with your friends on social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you use, and uh, let them know where the where the party's at. It's going to be right here, Nocturnal Gamers versus Sidestorm Gaming. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.